Our second story is our friend Scott Grace out from uh, BNSF Railway. And uh, this was actually uh, part of his submission to become an FME certified professional. So thanks, Scott, for submitting. And, uh, and he now is the proud recipient of uh, FME certified professional, I'm not sure, license? What does he get? Oh, that's a certification added. Certi yeah. Certificate, <laughs> all the rights and privileges uh, granted there too. Yeah. So anyway, his, one of his many stories was how he used FME in combination with RGS Online to keep a live map of where the trains are. As much as I can tell, they're trains. They seem to be on tracks and they move in a fairly predictable way. Um, so it must be trains, That's unlike our buses. Our buses <laughs> later on are a little bit less predictable and we'll get to that. But he wanted to do it in a, a live refresh and this data was coming from all kinds of other places. And, um, and so he, what he did was he uses FME to create KML. And then he uses a KML layer in a web map with ArcGIS Online and has it refresh in a regular way. And so the input data, in his case, uh, again, a bit of a more traditional FME story where he's bringing CSV point data coming from somewhere into KML as well as shape files into KML. And um, he, he, right now it's set up that a user manually drops, drags and drops or adds these files in and it fires off an FME process that does this. But as uh, Scott was telling me, the new capabilities in FME server to take action when a file arrives in a directory would be where he would take this next. So the, when a file just shows up in a directory, bang, the map would, uh, would be updated. And Laura, you're, you work on FME server, don't you? Yes, that's right. So do you yeah. believe it could be done? Definitely, yeah. Yes, yeah. So that would be a great um, next thing for him to do. So in his case, and that, that's what you'll notice with some of these folks that have been using FME with ArcGIS Online in FME 2013, which is, uh, which is what uh, Scott was doing, he ends up using an HTTP uploader kind of thing to basically update things inside of ArcGIS Online using the GeoRest services API through HTTP callers. And so that's what he was, was doing there. So initially he uploads the file. Here, this is how he uploads the KML. And then he does a second test to see was that file already there. And if it was there, then he has to go and whack it and, um, and cause it to be up, updated. So there's a little different workflow for the first time versus subsequent times. Mm -hmm. And this one workspace tries to upload it. If it bounces off, says, hey, it was already there, then it says, okay, good, I'll then update it. So it's a little different set of calls. So that, that was the trick for him. And so now watch this closely in the area where the red square is. Are you paying attention, Laura? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yep. Watch. <laughs> Did some, oh, there it moved. So um, that's, that's the kind of thing that goes on. And this proves to me that Chicago is a real big center for trains. <laughs> Just like there was a, some kind of a board game that I play with train tracks. And if you can get to Chicago, you generally you'll win. And that must be close to real life. So, um, so anyway, that's what Scott's doing. And he sets this refresh. You can set the refresh interval as low as every what? Oh, I had it at 0.1. So of, of a minute. So yeah. that's six seconds. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty refreshing situation. Yes. 